I'd like to call the ninth regular meeting of the 2017-2018 Sheboygan Common Council to order. Vote for the day. Thank you, Mayor. A leader is someone who believes in you and gets you to believe in yourself. Thank you very much. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 15, I'm sorry, 15 present right now. Thank you very much. Uh, Alderperson Savaglio uh, is excused. Uh, next, we'll move on to the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from our last meeting on uh, July 17th. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on those minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Aye. Next item, we'll move on to public forum, and I'd just like to remind people that there's no signs that are allowed in the chambers and no applause or cheers of approval or disapproval is allowed. Turn it over to the city clerk. Thank you, Mayor. Um, first on the list, we have uh, Mary Matiska. Mary, are you here? Hope I pronounced your name right. Thank you. To our aldermen that are online, would you please mute your phones? And Mary, can I have your address, please? It's uh, 507 Michigan Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Okay, and you will have five minutes. Okay, thank you. I am proud to call Sheboygan my hometown because I grew up here. Then in 1997, I moved to Charlotte, North Carolina. Three years ago, my husband and I decided to relocate and raise our young family here. My husband, who isn't from here, had very little knowledge of Sheboygan, except for that it has great schools, a beautiful lakefront, and that Kohler has amazing golf courses. Being away for so long, I was thrilled for my children, knowing that they were going to have a great childhood just like mine. The devotion and the pride that the residents of Sheboygan have is incomparable, reaffirming that we've made the decision, the great decision to return. After doing my own research and a lot of reflection, I have decided to take a stand for the uh, annexation today. I believe in my city and I, I, be I believe in the ability for its growth. It's no secret that Sheboygan was terribly affected by the recession. When I returned, I saw that major corporations had closed down, downsized, moved, moved away, which resulted in thousands losing their jobs. Some even lost their homes. I saw that many homes are run down, including neighborhoods and buildings. This annexation is not just about a golf course, and it's not just about coal or company or even about land. This is about a city accepting the invitation to advance and to repair itself. So out of curiosity, I took two evenings and I went around, I circulated a petition around my neighborhood asking my neighbors and just talking to them about the annexation and on how they feel. I went down Michigan Avenue towards 5th and up towards 8th Street, St. Clair Avenue, and Huron Avenue. I received about 30 signatures and about two out of three of those were in favor of the annexation. Most people in support describe the annexation as an easy decision for our city. Many local businesses, business owners stated that Kohler golf courses actually help their businesses, that the quality of the Kohler amenities is exactly the character our community should strive for. A few raised environmental issues as well, in which I respect. A big reason why my family and I moved here is because of the beauty of our state parks and is because of the, our lake shore. But I also have confidence in the DNR 
and Army Corps of Engineers that they will do their job to protect our land. That this plan could help eliminate invasive species and create a better environment for wildlife habitat than is at its present state. Our, this community was over 50,000 in population when I left in 1997, and it's much less than it is than that today. When a city continues to lose residents, it loses merit, property and homes lose their value, and local businesses fail, causing quality of life to weaken. Members of the City Council and Sheboygan residents, I urge you to vote for our economic well-being, to see the big picture and how this will attract tourism, national and international reputation, in addition to providing tax revenues to support improvements within our city and local growth for many years to come. I understand how important it is to keep working towards job creation. This proposed annexation will increase, inc encourage young professionals like myself to want to visit our city and see that it is a great place to live and work. This might not be a silver bullet, but it may just be the bold investment that our city needs to move forward. Most of my neighbors in District 4 and I certainly feel this way. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Mary. Next on the list is Dane Sheklinski. That's fine. Thank you. Dane, can I have your home address, please? 3217 West Apache. All right, and you will have five minutes. Well, thank you. I wanted to start out by thanking each older person for your service to our community. As a resident of the city, thank you. Tonight I'm speaking on behalf of the Sheboygan County Economic Development Corporation in support of the proposed development. The SCDC is a nonprofit with a board representation from over 40 business and community leaders from around the county. The SCDC has taken supportive <coughs> stances on several investments in the county in the past few years. We will not break face today with our core belief that investment in Sheboygan County's infrastructure and economy is crucial to our community's well-being. Without new, continued, and diverse job and economic <coughs> opportunities for both residents and businesses alike, communities are certain to erode. I would like to thank everyone involved and urge the older persons of this community to support the proposed development. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Next on the list is Don Hammond. And Don, can you give me your home address, please? Seriously? Seriously, I don't remember it. <laughs> 1928, Tavoli Lane, Sheboygan. Okay, and you will have five minutes, sir. It's kind of a familiar spot. Good evening to all and thank you for the opportunity to share my thoughts with you on the proposed annexation. When I left the council last year, I shared some thoughts that are relevant as you decide on the proposed annexation. I suggested in my final words as this body's president that the city has momentum, great things are happening, and this body should stay focused on continued growth and economic development. That's it. That said, the city now has an incredible and likely one-time opportunity to expand its borders for future growth. It is argued that if the annexation happens, it, would essentially, it, it is essentially a rubber stamp for the proposed golf course. I would disagree. There are many approvals that must happen before this project would be approved to include the DNR, Army Corps, and of course the city of Sheboygan itself. This is far from a rubber stamp. But if the proposed course is approved, the economic impact would be tremendous. One might say that all these forecasts and projections that have no bearing in reality are inflated just to get this approved. Fortunately, we have the experience of three PGA Championships, an LPGA Women's Open, and most recently the US Open at Aaron Hills to demonstrate its impact is tangible and real. I'm not advocating for the golf course without its due process. However, to nix this opportunity for annexation because of the proposed golf course seems short-sighted. Some have questioned the process of forcing in those who may not want to annex. I understand that some may not be happy with being annexed into the city. 
I ask, what about those that do? Those town residents who would like to get the benefits of city water instead of wells, police, fire, EMS, and the other services that the city provides. Additionally, this annexation allows us to connect already city-owned property in the town for future development purposes. Some may not decide to support this annexation because their thoughts about Mr. Kohler or the Kohler Company. Again, I ask you to put your personal differences aside and, discern and focus on what's in the best interest of the city of Sheboygan. This annexation helps to ensure the city has ample opportunity for future residential and commercial growth. As I indicated, opportunities to annex 500 acres don't come by very often. In fact, the last annexation of this size in Sheboygan occurred in 1959, 70, almost 70 years ago. In my opinion, it would be a shame to see yet another tremendous opportunity foolishly and unnecessarily pass us by because of our feelings about a person or a company. It's bigger than that. I urge you to focus on the big picture and what makes our city stronger. As an older person, I sat where you sit during some very difficult decisions. In fact, Todd's sitting in my chair right now. From the budget discussions to the Field of Dreams debate, I understand the dynamics of making these decisions and the emotions that these debates can conjure. However, when looking at the big picture and what's in the best interest of the city and those that you represent, the benefits to the city of this annexation are clear. Increased tax revenue, increased opportunity for future economic development, and if the proposed golf course is approved, over 200 new jobs and more than $20 million of, in, of economic impact. Additionally, the boost for Sheboygan's reputation as a tourism destination can only help attract more people to visit our city with their wall, along with their wallets and enhance our image as a great place to live and work. Thank you for your time, and I, vote you, I encourage you to vote for the annexation. Thank you. Thank you, John. All right, next on the list is James <coughs> Schusler. James, are you here? Yeah. All right. And James, can I have your home address, please? 2226 North 6th Street, Sheboygan. Okay, and you only have five minutes, sir. Hi, my name is James Matthew Schusler, and I'm a proud resident of the city of Sheboygan and a board member of the Sheboygan JCs. In fact, I represent the seventh generation of my family in America. My family moved to the town of Wilson from Germany 170 years ago before Wisconsin was even a state. I consider myself to be an environmentally oriented person. In fact, for over two years, I have been in full employment uh, for Gander Mountain, helping people connect with the outdoors. In Sheboygan County, we have incredible public spaces from the Kettles to Dillon Park. No one should have the right, however, to try to turn someone's personal land into a park, especially when the landowner has the means and the right to develop their property. For example, Whistling Straits is amazing, isn't it? And it is open to the public. Uh, last month, I lost my job at Gander Mountain, but I'm doing all right. I'm returning to college full time, completing my degree. And if the opportunity exists for a marketing-oriented guy like me, I will secure employment locally through local jobs. I've read a lot about the proposed golf course. It amazes me that some people are disparaging someone that creates so many jobs in Sheboygan County. Uh, we should be thanking the Kohler Company. I also know that the DNR and the Army Corps of Engineers will not allow the plan to go forward without their approval. We have a chance to vote for job creation. We have a chance to vote for Sheboygan. Thank you. All right, last on the list would be Rose Phillips. Is Rose here? Hi, Rose. You want to come on up? And Rose, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, 1628 Spruce Court, Sheboygan. Okay, and you'll have five minutes. I want to thank the council for taking a little extra time to research and process these complex issues that are before us. I speak to you this evening as an 11-year resident of this city, a homeowner, a small business owner, and a mother of three daughters. I am grateful for this opportunity to speak with you tonight. I also feel a very great responsibility to speak on behalf of many others who wish to speak tonight but cannot. I find myself in a position very similar to yours. 
I have spent a great amount of time researching this proposal and its related issues. Council members and the mayor have shared with me a sincere love and concern for our city. Our common goal of growing Sheboygan and its economy unite us. We should also agree upon ethics, especially regarding the influence of large corporations on our governing bodies. Our local government is the base of our democracy. And in this annexation process, we see a reflection of larger trends that are happening in our nation. A complex interplay between two visions, one decided by the will of the people through our elected officials, and the other decided by the influence of wealth. Here in Sheboygan County, an individual with excessive wealth and influence has fast-tracked a process that would have been insurmountable for, say, a small business owner like myself. The Kohler Company employs 6,000 people in Sheboygan County, and he generously donates to education, health, and the arts, thus creating a great sphere of influence. In fact, four of our council members are employed directly or indirectly by the Kohler Company. Many Kohler employees, along with a multitude of local officials and nonprofit leaders, do not feel comfortable speaking openly about this proposal for fear of potential consequences. This is a source of ethical concern. How much influence does this company have? And how much influence should one corporation have? Many strongly disagree with aspects and ethics of this project, namely the incomplete environmental assessments and permit applications, Kohler's buying of houses and placing supportive tenants in them, the usage of a shadow company to purchase a home from an unsuspecting seller, the circumventing of local municipalities' jurisdiction over developments that impact their constituents, and the recent revision of our local state parks master plan, allowing for the destruction of our natural resources and our publicly owned state park land. All of this for a single corporation's private profit under the guise of strengthening Sheboygan's economy. Despite an outpouring of concerns from thousands of residents of the city, county, and state, regarding the questionable processes, this proposal is surprisingly still on the table. To distract us from the serious ethical violations, Kohler has resorted to a financial seduction campaign. This campaign encourages city officials to market the contrived annexation route to their constituents as not only being in the city's and the public's best interest, but also as if it is so generous that we should accept it without question. The attractive economic growth lure so eloquently pitched by Kohler, the Kohler firm is nothing more than a well-constructed facade. We are hearing different numbers of jobs, of tax revenue, of financial responsibilities. Proponents of this project interestingly claim that adding a fifth golf course to this area will entice tourists heading north on I-43 to stop in Sheboygan. But truthfully, most commuters travel north to enjoy the vast natural spaces and go camping, not golfing. Kohler Andre State Park already attracts over 400,000 visitors every year. Are we really willing to sacrifice the known economic benefits from one of the most visited parks in our state for unknown and unsubstantiated claims? There are better, safer, more sustainable ways to strengthen and grow our city that would uphold Sheboygan's <coughs> practice of ethical governing. I hope that we will work with the Kohler Company to further this tradition. To those who vote yes, I want to thank you for reminding us to be vigilant in local politics. We will stay engaged to ensure that ethics and accountability in our hometown are reflected in our local representatives. To those council members who vote no to this annexation, on behalf of the citizens of this community and all its future generations, including my daughters, I thank you. Your strong leadership for sustainable development and ethical governing principles sends a message of a Sheboygan that we can all be proud of. I hope that the council members consider all the personal contacts, emails, and phone calls that they have received as a healthy sign of a vibrant and strong local democracy. This is how our nation was designed to function. We should take pride in the fact that our residents are paying attention and they care. We are all watching to see what kind of example. Excuse me, Rose? Yes. Your time is up. I'm almost done. May I have permission to finish? Make it quick. Thank you. We are all watching to see what kind of example Sheboygan City Government will set. Who is in power here? The people and our elected officials or one wealthy corporation? I urge you to maintain ethical local governing and protect your taxpayers 
by voting no to this proposal tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Rose. That's it. Okay, next we'll go on to a program, uh, the 2017 Strategic Plan Action Items and Critical Measures by City Administrator Daryl Hoffland. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, in January of this year, uh, this Common Council approved a 2017-2021 strategic plan. It is available on the city's website. It contains, it contains many action items and critical measures. Uh, hopefully the PowerPoint is up. Great. Uh, there are six focus areas, quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, governing and fiscal management, and last but not least, communication. Quarterly, uh, I provide you with an update. This is my second uh, update since the strategic plan was approved. City staff will be providing uh, the, the respective committee commissions and boards with other benchmark updates uh, scheduled for this month, August, as well as, uh, as, well as September again for the first half of the year. I'd like to quickly go through some of the highlights of these focus areas, specifically concentrating on sort of two categories. One is action items. Uh, the strategic plan has a two-year 2017-2018 list of action items, as well as critical measures. Uh, as, as many of you know, what gets measured gets results. And so uh, it's important for city staff to benchmark uh, and quantify uh, success in, in achieving um, progress for these uh, focus areas. Uh, first is quality of life. Uh, again, I'll just hit on uh, a couple of the uh, items in each category. Uh, and again, hopefully uh, our village, our city clerk can, uh, can keep track as we proceed. Uh, first is quality of life. Uh, action items, uh, the city actually has uh, three different uh, actions, uh, bench-friendly community, coordinate with Sheboygan County on the South Side Utility Corridor bike path, and obtain right away from the railroad to incorporate a bike path along Indiana Avenue. We've made progress in all three areas. Uh, critical measures under quality of life is measuring our, our first EMS arrival time. Uh, I'm pleased to uh, announce that 90% uh, is our benchmark, that 90% uh, of the time the EMS unit will arrive in 240 seconds or less. In the first half of this year, uh, we're at 88%, so very close to making that benchmark. We also measure the first fire unit to, to arrive on scene, 300 seconds or less. Uh, our goal is 90% of the time, we're at 74%, so uh, we're not quite there. Other things we uh, quantify is uh, part one crime rate, violent crimes per thousand population, as well as property crimes per thousand violent, uh, per thousand population, police to report. And I know the uh, police chief will be discussing with the public service, uh, public safety committee uh, next week that property crimes is down 20% first half of this year compared to last year, first half of 2016. And again, well below uh, our, our, our goal or our benchmark for that category. Other quality of life critical measures is the city's walk score. Uh, 80, 80 points out of 100 is our benchmark, and in fact, we are at 80. Second, second focus area is infrastructure and public facilities. Again, I'll hit on just a couple. Dedicate funding for the Emerald Ash Borer Program. Um, 1,200 ash trees were, were in fact treated uh, earlier this spring, far exceeding our goal. Uh, repainting railings along the riverfront, 95% uh, complete, install new river docks at South Pier, 100% complete. Uh, working with the federal government on refurbishing South 8th Street Bridge. Um, Pre-construction meeting is gonna occur this month and uh, construction or rehab will start uh, uh, approximately end of September, first part of October. Critical measures in infrastructure and public facilities include the number of street trees planted. Uh, 82 trees were planted uh, this spring. An additional 400 are expected uh, this fall, so we will be close to meeting our 500 tree benchmark. Pavement rating, uh, the rating process occurs 
uh, in early winter uh, last year, or 2015, uh, 5.93 was the rating. Again, the higher the number, the better. We hopefully will be at over 6 or 6.25 is a specific target. Action items under economic development is construct the arts culture plaza, assemble redevelopment sites for uh, in key areas. Uh, the city council has been working on Indiana Avenue. Coordinate with consultants on a new business park project. Um, in fact, you as a common council have approved that contract and later on the agenda you'll be discussing um, offers to purchase uh, to begin the process of acquiring property. Critical measures is the amount of room tax generated. 550,000 is our benchmark for 2017. Year to date, we're at 66% or 364,000 and change. Other critical measures is the value of property in our TIF districts. These are our redevelopment areas. Uh, 100, 120 million is our benchmark approximately. Uh, we just received information from the state last week that we're at 126, 126 million. So we're at 106% of our benchmark. Change in property valuation. Again, pleased to report that the city uh, equalized value increased by 7% uh, this past year. Um, our benchmark was under 4%. Our, uh, last year we had only 2%, so a significant increase in, in, again, equalized valuation in the community, new construction as well as appreciation of existing properties. Our net new construction, uh, this, pat, this last year was 94 million. This is equivalent to four years of prior uh, economic development. So in one year, uh, 94 million, more than four years of the previous years. Neighborhood revitalization, action items include uh, implementing a new north side neighborhood beat officer. Uh, that officer was assigned uh, to his new position on January 15th, uh, other critical measures are new neighborhood associations. Benchmark is two, in fact, two have been uh, created. C a number of code enforcement orders issued, 1,000 was the benchmark. Uh, year to date, we're at 575. <coughs> so our code, en code enforcement officers are, are active uh, both on the north and south side. Governing and fiscal management is the fifth Action night is the fifth focus area for action items is to submit our budget as well as our financial audit to the Government Finance Officers Association. This in essence is an indication for staff as well as our citizens that our standards are high and that we are searching to continue to make improvements. Uh, we hope to hear on both uh, submittals uh, in the next month. Uh, our transportation development program uh, the city has contracted with a planning agency and work will begin as early as this month. For critical measures, percent of unspent general fund budget for 2017, a year to date we're at 7%, our benchmark is 3.7. Uh, Moody's Investors Service Bond Rating, uh, the city received confirmation in April associated with our 2017 borrowing that our AA2 bond rating was reaffirmed. Uh, last focus area is communication. A uh, couple action items is to conduct a community, uh, conduct a citizen survey. Uh, this occurred last month. Uh, I will be giving the results to you uh, at your next community of the whole, which will be uh, in a couple weeks. Uh, create a citizen engagement plan. Uh, this was approved by, the com by you, the Common Council, on May of 2017. Critical measures. Number of followers, uh, this is basically uh, social media related. Number of followers on, on all city department Twitter accounts. Our goal was roughly 6,800. Year to date, we're at 7,300. Number of users on Nextdoor, benchmark was 2,400, we're at 3,200. And number of Nexo contacts, benchmark was 1,400, we're at, at over 1,500 again year to date. As I mentioned, uh, these, these and other benchmarks will be reported uh, to the respective community commissions and boards. Uh, they will be posted on the city's website. Uh, so I hope that uh, if you have an interest, uh, please follow along. If there's individual questions, uh, feel free uh, to give me a call or an email. Again, the report that I've distributed to you, to you tonight will be posted on the city's uh, website as well. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much for that report.
Next, we'll go on to uh, mayor's announcements. Um, we had a, a dedication ceremony held for the Founders Club. That's an invest. That's a project that we invested a TIF increment and a development loan in. And at that rededication, uh, the Schmidt brothers, on behalf of their company, uh, shared a little uh, tribute that he, uh, to all of you. And so you all have uh, a glass on your uh, desks to take home as a remembrance of that. Next, I'd just like to make a few comments about the proposed annexation we'll be voting on tonight. Tonight, we plan to vote on the annexation petition that was presented by the Kohler Company. This will be the third time that this matter is brought up on our agenda for action. Some have said that the city was moving too fast in making a decision on this proposed annexation, and this delay has allowed for ample time for all to research and study this question. My decision to recommend the approval of the annexation with the suburban residential zoning has not changed since the Planning Commission meeting considered this matter. This annexation was not pursued by the city, but was brought forward by the, the uh, Kohler Company. The company wanted to connect the city water to support the future development of their land that was included in the annexation. This annexation is important to the city of Sheboygan for it to thrive and be successful. The amenities that the city of Sheboygan provides for its citizens are also enjoyed by the municipalities that surround Sheboygan. But it's the tax base of the city that pays for these facilities, while town residents enjoy the convenience of a city without having to pay for the overall costs. I believe that this annexation needs to be approved to see a strong city of Sheboygan in the future. Several decades ago, the town of Sheboygan needed an easement from the city to complete their water distribution system that is now in place. The city council approved this easement over the warnings of uh, city planner Frank Paquette. This decision allowed the town of Sheboygan to complete its water distribution system and stymie future annexations to the city of Sheboygan. This act act action in the long run has prevented the city from growing to the north and the west. The decision that the city council makes on this annexation will define the future of the city of Sheboygan. This annexation, if approved tonight, could set the stage for many adjacent properties to consider annexing and connecting to city water and grow Sheboygan's tax base. This annexation is not about a golf course or being a good neighbor. This decision is really about the future of Sheboygan. Decades from now, when our city leaders look back at this decision that we're making today, I want them to have a strong and prosperous Sheboygan. I hope that you agree with me that we need to make the decision tonight that will be best for the city of Sheboygan and approve this annexation. Next, we'll move on to uh, documents pertaining to the annexation and zoning. And zoning. Item 2.1 is RO number 113 of 1718 by the city clerk submitting a communication from Debbie Desmolin stating that golf courses are closing nationwide and have been for the past decade because of younger generations lack of interest. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I'd like to make a, make a motion to take 2.1 uh, through 2.7 as one. Second. Thank you for that motion to accept and file items 2.1 through 2.7. Is there any discussion on that or any of those items? Seeing none, all those in favor of accepting and filing, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to 2.8. RC number 72 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred RC number 51 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, and resolution number 28 of 1718 by Alderperson Donahue and Boren, authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the pre annexation and development agreement, and recommends passing the resolution along with the current amended agreement as of 712 of 17. Alderperson Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move to uh, pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mayor the, and council members, I think this pre annexation agreement is certainly a better agreement than it had previously been. There's a more fair share of the water installation pipes from the city limits down to the golf course. 
uh, and the Kohler company has agreed to assume a greater portion of that cost. Um, we have negotiated um, uh, access rights uh, along the lake that are more generous than the public trust doctrine would typically allow. Um, here's my concern. Um, I haven't gotten this many letters from lawyers in really quite a long time. Um, I think that our um, legal exposure here is significant. Um, I'm going to direct you to the uh, letter from the DOA uh, indicating that um, that there was that this annexation met the public interest. <clears throat> Now, the fellow who wrote this obviously has never been in the area. Uh, as he said, the, the proposed annexation more closely resembled the city than the town. But nonetheless, he calls into question whether or not the balloon on a string, whether the string, which has been litigated in both 1964 and 65, where, where this annexation falls, um, <coughs> It's, it's not an easily resolved question, but as far as I can tell, it is certainly a litigatable question. And I think that those who are opposed to this action will consider that as an opportunity. Um, I received a letter from the town of Wilson's, I think we all did, from the town of Wilson's, um, one of their attorneys uh, talking about potential conflicts of interest. Frankly, it was a fairly compelling letter. Um, I do respect Attorney Adams' decision that, that Kohler employees who are members of this council, they don't have a conflict of interest because they have no personal financial interest in it. I, I will accept uh, Attorney Adams' uh, uh, decision on that, uh, but again, I think it's a pretty litigatable point. Um, there have been a variety of other accusations that have gone back and forth. Some I think are frivolous, some I think uh, with respect to open meetings, although the city, I think, would surely um, uh, would surely prevail in, in most of those smaller issues. Nonetheless, the cost of getting into the courtroom and litigating these matters is substantial. I just don't think two hundred thousand dollars is enough. Um, I think that uh, what I'm going to propose is an amendment uh, to raise that limit to five hundred thousand. Now. It may be that we never get anywhere near that, and that's good news. It's good news for the Kohler Company, and quite frankly, that's good news for us. On the other hand, if it does not play out that way, and we have substantial litigation, I can tell you from experience, and it was also uh, discussed at the finance meeting, litigation, modern litigation, is a very expensive proposal. Now, we will be getting eventually 89000 or so dollars a year in property taxes, but that's at least three, probably four, maybe five years down the line as the golf course is built and the assessment is done. I'm really concerned about not only there not being a great financial benefit here, but that there could actually be substantial out-of-pocket detriment to the city. And so I know that the Kohler Company and its employees are fully committed to moving forward with this, and I think that this is a fairly small uh, uh, difference to the, uh, the pre-annexation agreement that will be agreeable if, in fact, this annexation and the rezoning uh, gets, uh, gets approved tonight. So in that regard, I move to amend the pre-annexation agreement only to the extent that instead of $200,000 that the city would be reimbursed for, it would be $500,000. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mary Lynn, although I think you've been uh, instrumental <coughs> to helping us in, uh, in finance, um, I disagree with, uh, with your motion. I really think that no matter what we do, there's always an opportunity for uh, litigation. Uh, that's, you know, no pun intended, maybe a little bit, but that's how lawyers uh, make, their, make their money. The, the issue is anybody can get sued for all kinds of things, and we really have done our due diligence, and we really need to um, move forward on this. Thank you. 
Thank you for those comments. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Seven eyes, nine no's. Motion, or rather the amendment is defeated. We're back on the main motion. Is there any other discussion on the main motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Eleven eyes, five no's. Motion passes. Item 2.9 is general ordinance number six of 1718 by Alderperson Bourne and Sorensen annexing the territory to the city of Sheboygan. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. I'll make a motion to pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and the second. Uh, the ordinance uh, is before you right now. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Lewandowski. I would like to read something. We are about to vote on what could be a good thing for Sheboygan or one of the biggest disasters in the history of Sheboygan. I grew up in the early 70s and two things made me not believe everything that I heard. One was various studies that cigarette <coughs> smoking did not cause cancer. We later learned that these studies were done and paid for by the big tobacco companies. Now we are supposed to believe that the numbers that Kohler Company gives us in a report done for a Kohler company and paid for by a Kohler company, if a study was done, I still have not seen or heard where these numbers came from. The second thing that was being told about a great idea that would revitalize our downtown, it was called Plaza 8. Those of us who are familiar with or lived here know what a disaster it was. Mayor Vandersteen told me that if I, or that I was elected to represent, to do what is best for the people of Sheboygan, not Black River. I could also add to that that I was elected to represent the people of Sheboygan and not a billionaire from a village west of here, the city. A billionaire that thinks he can buy whatever he wants and other people don't matter. Only what he wants matters. We have all been told by all the, of all the extra tax money that will come pouring into the city, but we will also have more expenses with this annexation. We are told about all the jobs that this golf course will create. What is not mentioned is that most of these jobs are at most six months out of 12. In case you haven't noticed, not many people golf in November, December, January, February, March, or April. So these would be seasonal jobs, which mean part-time with zero benefits. Do these so these jobs would not be the type to support a family. We have been told all the money that would pour into the city from golf tournaments, yet these golf tournaments are only on average once every five years, so it would not be a steady flow of money. We are told that golfers will come here to play these courses, but how many of them will come back every year and how long would they stay? Maybe one week every few years and three years after the tournament, how many people would still come for the first time? No business can survive on customers like that, and it is a very limited market. 
Also, it would affect the people of Sheboygan with two new lawsuits that would cost the people of Sheboygan millions of dollars, money that the people would rather see being used for road repair. Not many people in Sheboygan could afford to play on these golf courses, so how does that benefit the people of Sheboygan? We are putting the cart before the horse. Since Kohler has not received the needed DNR permits, what development will there be if Kohler doesn't get the DNR permits? Herb Kohler and Kohler Company have never done anything that benefit the city of Sheboygan unless it benefited Kohler Company and Herb Kohler more. With the pre-annexation agreement, what happens if Kohler Company doesn't follow it? There is no way for us to enforce it. A billionaire with a billion dollar company will feel that whatever we find him is nothing, it's just the cost of doing business. Two good examples of this are buying houses in Black River and putting Kohler Company employees in them in order to get the needed number of signatures on the annexation request forms and hiring a Sheboygan alderman to work in a Kohler-owned realty company after this annexation process was started by Kohler Company. Talk about a conflict of interest. As the old saying goes, if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Now I want to read two letters from two people affected by, by this, but even though it affects them, they were not able to speak at the public forum because the public forum is for residents of Sheboygan only. But we did allow Kohler Company representatives to speak, even though Kohler Company is not in the city and hasn't been since the early 1900s. The first letter is it seems this should be a no-brainer to support not bulldozing several acres of our publicly owned state park lands to build parking lots, roads, and a maintenance garage to serve the private company at the expense of the thousands of us that use that property. But such is the case when you're dealing with pro-development at, at any cost and conservation illiterate people in elected office. I see even the Sheboygan aldermen and women are repeating like mimicking parrots, cores lined at the state park land they want to develop for private use is land that is not used by the public. Anyway, you think that they were talking about an abandoned dump site or old cornfield? Where does one start with anti-ecology and anti-science mindsets like this? The area designated for the new roadway, roundabout, and the golf courses, massive shop and large parking storage area is actually a very valuable woodland area and soon sand dune ecological area. It has native white pine, beech, oak, birch, and maple trees, rare dune plants, and native woodland shrubs and flowers. All would be cut down and leveled to build the fa fa facilities that Kohler wants to build on state land. Just because there is no development, such as building roads or trails in that area, does not mean that it's useless or unused parkland. Wisconsin State Parks intentionally leave about 90% of all their properties undeveloped for the benefit of both flora and fauna that live there. This is addressed in all property master plans as important and pre-planned activities. In addition to the trees, shrubs, and plants mentioned, their area is used extensively by deer, fox, and other, other mammals, and it is home to many species of birds that use the area to rest. I know for sure that there were great horned owls rest and nesting there for many years, and probably still are. Also, the now rare whippoorwills have used the area for nesting as well as many other songbirds and birds of prey. There are also several seasonal wetland pockets that are used by wood frogs, spruce salamanders, and other amphibians for reproduction each year. Can the displaced wildlife just merely move somewhere else? That's what Kohler says about the woodlands they will be leveling for their golf course. But why should they have to be done on valuable protected state parkland? already set aside as wildlife refuge. As to use by the public, bird and wildlife watchers and photographers, artists, also use this area for the recreation and enjoyment primarily because it is not highly developed. Their chance to see undisturbed wildlife and natural ecosystems is much better in these places. Hikers also use the area for exercise and just to explore the park area away from busy trails beaches and campgrounds. Yes, the most small park shop building is
is there, but that's no excuse to town more of the woodland area and sand dune areas for private use and on prevent park visitors from ever using this area again for their recreational enjoyment. Undevelopment does not mean unused. I guess the other main issue is prohibition of giving away or leasing publicly owned state park lands into private individuals for profit corporations and companies. The acquisition of land, including this area, falls under the Federal Law Com Act, which prohibits the state from giving away state park lands, except in very rare circumstances where the public good must be served. Would every, anyone really consider giving away state park land for a golf course developer to build a private road and private shop parking for facility of public need? There is a justification for this action as it pertains to law com, law com funding regulations and enforcement. Hope some of this is helpful and it was sent by Jim Buckholz, who was the former superintendent for 38 years of Terry Andre State Park. The second letter I want to read is it, to members of the Sheboygan Common Council. Dear Common Council members, the purpose of my communication to you is in regard to this proposed annexation of 750 acres of public and private property from the town of Wilson and the city of Sheboygan. My name is Jim Buckholz. Uh, I should have read this with the other part. And I was a town of Wilson resident for almost 28 years. I served as a park superintendent at Kohler Andre State Park, retired from the Department of Natural Resources in 2004 after serving the state for 36 years, and I'm currently a Sheboygan County resident. I continue serving the park today, primarily as a volunteer, and Wisconsin Master Naturalist Trainer. So I am still actively interested in the good of this particular park. First, let me assure you that I am not against the golf courses in general for the Kohler Company's right to build them. I am the, the company's transformation of the abandoned airfield in the town of Mosul in the Wilson Straits course, for the most part, has been a positive asset to the Sheboygan area. I am against the location of Kohler's proposed golf course on their property, adjacent to Black River residential area and taking of state park property for the town of Wilson. I urge you to vote no on the proposed annexation for the following reasons. The 270 acres of Kohler Company property located north of Kohler Andre State Park <coughs> is in the town of Wilson, is owned as P1 Parks and Recreation. The company plan to develop an 18-hole golf course on his property is not allowed under P1 zoning. The sole reason for Kohler's desire to have this city of property annex with public-private property seems to many citizens to be a fairly disguised attempt to override the town of Wilson's jurisdiction in having the company fulfill their requirement to complete a conditional use permit. I believe the town of Wilson has been more than fair with Kohler in requiring a business permit, but it appears that Kohler staff did not want or could not justify that the construction and operation of the golf course, and I don't have the second letter on me. But it was uh, from the family of the 83-year-old man in the town of Wilson whose property is being forced into the city as part of this annexation and is 83 years old and has lived on the property his entire life and is totally opposed to it because it's forcing him into the city of Sheboygan, which he does not want to be part of. That's all I have to say, except that I urge my fellow older persons to vote against this annexation. Thank you. Next will be older person Trester. I don't have any um, prepared speech or letters to read to you, but I am going to say this because I think we need to be heard. Over the last few weeks, I've received 120 phone calls. Now, I know my counterpart didn't get that many because the people that called me told me <coughs> they didn't call him. 120 people in the last few weeks called to express their opinions on this. We heard 
the Sheboygan County Economic Development Board. We heard from the people of Wilson, but we haven't heard from the people of Sheboygan. And I can tell you that of the 120 phone calls from my constituents, I'm not counting the ones that live in the city who have all of them in other places, 120 people called me and said, do not vote in favor of this annexation. And actually six people did call and say I should. I also got 20 phone calls from the town of Wilson, but some of you would say disregard the people of the town of Wilson because they're not your constituents. I have spent my entire life working and listening to people. First as a family minister and then as a hospice chaplain. And I've got to tell you, I took this job as alderman and was elected in this last election as alderperson so that I could be the voice of the people in my district. And so tonight, I cast their ballot on this annexation and I say, no, I will not vote in favor of it because they don't want it. And they are not being represented here. And the Department of Administration says this is in the best interest of the public. I would like the names of the public that the Department of Administration interviewed to find out really whose interest this really was because it is in the interest of big money and not the people. Thank you. Next will be Alderperson Duran. Thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. I just had a very quick uh, actually in, in hearing the letter, it got me thinking about this. The acreage, can we just have a clarification? I have read that prior. I just want to make sure I have the right number in my head. It's not 700 something. Is it, could someone clarify what that actual acreage is? Uh, if there's no objection, I'd like to call Steve Cassidy up to uh, answer that question from the Kohler Company. <coughs> Steve, please come forward. So what was the question again, Roman? I just want to confirm the actual acreage and also to confirm the amount that is our already Kohler owned property. I've looked at earlier things. I just want to make sure I'm on the same page. Thank you. Steve? Yeah, Roman, it's uh, not 750 acres. I did provide uh, specific detail in the letter to all, all persons. I would ask you to refer to that uh, because it's accurate. Uh, but your number is in the total range of about 560 acres, uh, 250 that uh, Kohler Company currently owns. Thank you. Uh, under further discussion, Alderperson Lee Wendowski. When we vote on this, I would like to ask for a roll call vote. It'll be a, 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 a secret vote, and we'll get the numbers later, the way we always do it. Alderperson Donahue. Um, first of all, um, I have some thoughts on this. Um, the first thing I want to do is just thank all the people who participated, who've come here, who have contacted us, who have written us both pro and anti. Um, we somehow think that because there's protest and because people are upset or angry or dismayed or disbelieving, that somehow that's wrong. And I will just submit that that is the absolute mark of a democracy. And it's an incredibly important way that we show that our community is vibrant. One of the speakers, the public speakers, at the last uh, uh, public forum indicated that people who were opposed to the project were, these are just some of the things I wrote down, they were selfish, intimidating, uncontrollable, fear-mongering. And I would just suggest to you that it's exactly the opposite, that people who care enough to stand up and talk about what they believe in to contact their elected officials, that's what makes the democracy run and it's a good thing on both sides, both pro and anti. So I want to thank, just in a, a, a variation on an, an old t-shirt motto, well-behaved people seldom make history. And so I think that we need to keep that in mind. And I really appreciate all the input that we've received. Two, I think we can vote in favor of this proposal 
while still acknowledging that the loss of these 247 <clears throat> acres is a deep, deep, deep loss to our world, to the things that we treasure, to the things that make our lives worthwhile, it's, this land will be gone. There'll be a nice golf course there, I have no doubt. Uh, not too many people are gonna get there. Um, we've negotiated the fact that you can still walk along the water's edge and, and, and see. Um, but we need to acknowledge that it will be gone. Again, to paraphrase, I'm dating myself, one of my favorite songwriters, Joni Mitchell, you pave paradise, you put up a parking lot or a golf course, and it's just too bad. So for those who will vote yes on this, I think you can vote yes, but acknowledge it's too bad that this gorgeous, gorgeous land and its structure are gone forever. It's pretty sad. But my main objection, oh, I'm sorry, the microphones are a little bizarre tonight. Um, so I started thinking to myself, I know that, that townships can't annex property in, in, in uh, cities and such, but I, I always find that if I put myself in the other person's position, sometimes that helps me kind of figure out what the issues are. And I thought, what if the town of Wilson could just come on in and take Memorial Hospital land? Let's just imagine what that might be like. A place that's pretty far away from us can come in and grab the land and take it away from us. Now, they can't do that, but that's exactly what we're doing to the town of Wilson, and, and that's really what I'm objecting to. I want to reemphasize, I think we all know the Kohler Company never submitted a completed application to the town board. The town of Wilson has had no chance to vote on this. That is astonishing to me. And I think casts a, a long, deep, hard shadow over the process that we're going through now. Now, there are some annexations that are just fine. I know Director Beeble stood up and now we have two annexation maps, although I'm gonna make a request for a zoning map as well because that's even more colorful. Um, it is true that we grow by annexations uh, and we have done that over the years. Uh, again, you'll note from the Department of Administration letter, there was very strong encouragement for some cooperation in terms of cleaning up our borders, which as you can see are pretty odd but some annexations are really organic. We're going to annex business property that wants to come into the city because they need water, or they need this, or they need that. And the clear economic package for the city is undeniable. Those kinds of annexations do make sense. But we don't grow just through annexations. And I think Administrator Hoffman's presentation tonight shows that our city is growing. We are growing in terms of property, uh, property assessments, um, development. This is a really, I think everybody in the room can agree, this is a really good place to be living these days. And whether or not there's a third championship golf course in the city, even though it won't be in the city, I think we can all agree that Sheboygan is still going to be a growing place. Cities grow through density as well as expansion. We are a city. We are not a rural area. We are not an agricultural area. We are a city. I don't know about you, I am thrilled that these apartment buildings are going in downtown, that we're gonna get people in our downtown, that we're going to become dense, that we might actually have People might actually have trouble finding a place to park. Can you imagine that in, in Sheboygan? I could, you know, talk about growing up in Sheboygan. Yeah, well, um, when I look at that map, I, all I can think of is that this annexation is like an appendix. You know, it's part of your body, it's kind of down in a weird place, it doesn't do anything for you and it can cause a lot of trouble. Now, I do not doubt that there will be some economic benefit to the city from this annexation. I think it's gonna take a while. Um, the golf course 
builds no houses, it attracts no families, it doesn't attract schools. It's, uh, I'm sure it will be a lovely golf course, but it's a golf course. It is not a place that, that by itself, intrinsically, is going to make the city grow. The water line, on the other hand, is a big deal. And that water line is a really good idea. And I would say in 20 to 40 years, this annexation, if it is approved, is at least one way of looping that water system and, and allowing the city to grow. Um, but I think it's a long time coming, and it's come in a pretty dismal process. Um, the economic benefit, again, I am sure it is there. I personally hold myself responsible for not insisting on seeing the data upon which those economic projections were based. If you looked at the report, six pages, two glossy pages uh, front and back, and then in the middle there were certain representations about the number of jobs, the room tax, and number of visits, and so forth. And that may all be true, and it may not. But we don't know. And I, among others, should have been smart enough to say, show us your data, just so we can really be sure of the economic benefit. I do think that we are going to be paying a lot of lawyers a lot of money over a long period of time. Eventually, I think this will be of an economic benefit to the city, but at what cost? And as I weigh those costs, I, I just can't see it. And so I, I my sense is everything is kind of cast in stone at this point, but I would urge my fellow alders to just consider the negative pieces of this as well as the, gee, we're going to have another great Kohler golf course in the area. Next is Alderperson Nelson. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I have some prepared remarks, but before I uh, get to the prepared remarks, I, I just have to talk about um, the growing... Uh, turmoil over the fact that four core employees are on the uh, county, <coughs> I mean, on the uh, common council. As I, made it, as I made it clear in the first meeting that we had, uh, I do work at uh, Whistling Straits. I'm a core company employee in the hospitality and, uh, and real estate division. Uh, I can assure you that there is, I have no, I have not been pressured whatsoever in either way by any core employee. Uh, as to how to vote or any reactions to that. So uh, I, I feel, I'm, I mean, actually I feel a little hurt that, uh, that uh, there's the questions of uh, my, uh, my ethical conduct in voting uh, uh, is at stake. As a matter of fact, I feel that because I've been elected to represent the people in my district, I've been elect elected to, to uh, to act in their, in their uh, best interests. I think it would be unethical for me not to vote. So of course I'm going to vote tonight. So, for the past three months we've been listening to the pros and cons of accepting the annexation petition from the landowners in the town of Wilson who are requesting to be part of the city of Sheboygan. The speakers on the yes side are unan unanimous regarding the economic benefits to the city the Sheboygan Economic Development Corporation, the Chamber of Commerce, various business leaders all tout the tax benefits and the enhanced growth potential of this annexation. The speakers against this petition I roughly divide into four groups. Group one, the sincere, pa passionate environmentalists, whom I greatly respect, but I feel that their time and zeal could be better spent on more critical statewide issues like CAFOs, who are polluting aquifers throughout the whole state, and the dumping of hundreds of millions of gallons of raw, untainted sewage spewed into Lake Michigan by the city of Milwaukee. Group two, the small group of NIMBYs who are pretending to be environmentalists and have been using factoids, word bombs, and illogical syllogisms to weave a blanket of innuendo and misstatements. Group three, a group of people who have become smothered by that blanket and speak without really having an understanding of the facts. And four, the town officials who are hoping the whole complex issue just goes away. These groups number about 30 to 40 people, sound like a lot more, and the majority live in the town of Wilson. 
But what about the citizens of Sheboygan? We aldermen each directly represent about 6,000 citizens and indirectly represent 42,000 more. We were elected to represent these citizens and act in their best interest, and they trust us to do so. So what is their best interest? They want us to at least maintain, if not improve, the basic services that impact their lives daily. So what are these services? Fire and police protection. Our firemen and policemen are doing the best job they can with the resources they have. Do they need more resources? Ask about the opioid epidemic. Ask the people down near King Park after the shooting. How do we pay for such enhancements? Accelerated street repairs. We have a good start on rehabilitating our streets. The people have said we need to do it faster and better. How do we pay for that, especially without special assessments? Mead Public Library. The library has been struggling along with a flat budget for the past number of years. Cost of employees and materials continue to rise. Surveys show that the library is by far the largest destination of people going downtown. In fact, the library serves over 335,000 people every year. Will the library need to cut services or can we increase revenues? Bonding, we need to upgrade our, uh, we need upgrades to our sewage treatment plant. Our city hall needs to be rebuilt. Do we continue to borrow money for such projects, thus passing on this financial burden to our children and grandchildren? How do we hold the line on borrowing without increased revenues? And I'm not talking about the immediate revenues that acceptance of this annexation will bring. This annexation will provide an avenue for future growth for the city. Take a snapshot of Sheboygan in 2035 and beyond. Will it be the same city with the same financial problems, or will it be a city that is growing vibrantly and providing all the citizens those services that they want and deserve? So fellow aldermen, take responsibility for the job for which you were elected and act in the best citizens, in the best interest of the citizens of Sheboygan. Thank you. Next is Alderperson Bellinger. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Kohler and Mr. Cassidy, I'd like to thank you for your request for annexation into the city of Sheboygan. It is my belief that this is a watershed moment. You've presented the city with an unbelievable economic op opportunity that can be a catalyst for future growth and development. The first 26 years of the Kohler Company, Sheboygan was your home. In 1899, John Michael Kohler left Sheboygan and moved four miles west because he was concerned that the congestion of the city's 15,000 people would have a negative effect on his business. Now, 118 years later, Mr. Kohler is petitioning the city to annex a parcel that he owns. During the past few months, we've had to listen to people disparage Mr. Kohler's character, question his motives, and minimize his successes. I, for one, believe that Mr. Kohler is a visionary and am thankful that he's part of our community. It's hard to believe what Sheboygan County would be without the Kohler Company, his philanthropy, and the ripple effect that his successes have had. Annexation is vital to prosperity. Opposition to annexation is reflexive and predictable. Annexation is and always has been the lifeblood of growing vibrant cities. And the city's continued vitality is the larger long-term benefit that the citizens who protest annexation tend to overlook. Their opposition rests on the arguments that they are happy with the services that the county provides, they don't want to pay city taxes, and in this instance, they believe that they have the right to determine the development outcome of private property. Yet the opposition fails to consider two critical points. One is tax equity, the other is the necessity for the city to incorporate its natural tax base. The tax e equity argument springs from the fact that taxpayers in the city of Sheboygan also pay countywide taxes and thereby effectively subsidize the services of the citizens who live outside the city. The reality is that a huge chunk of the countywide taxes paid by 43% of the people in the county that reside in the city of Sheboygan are spent for services that the county provides only in unincorporated areas. County government's road building and maintenance and sheriff's patrols are all supported by taxes paid by city residents. This is not fair and it never has been. Cities essentially have no option but to expand their boundaries as they grow their economies and job base. Sheboygan simply cannot remain vital and vibrant if we are constrained over time with fixed boundaries. Sheboygan will either grow and thrive or wither over time for failure to incorporate their natural tax base. There is no such thing as standing still and not slipping backwards. 
Sheboygan must thrive and grow by capturing their natural tax base and improve their planning, amenities, and infrastructure. Or they must decline for lack of sufficient leadership, internal support, and civil par participation. Like it or not, annexation is not only inev inevitable and necessary, it's a point of fairness. According to the Brookings Institution, which is a liberal-leaning research institute located on a think tank row in Washington, D.C., their findings on annexation were, a city's abil ability to annex land from its surrounding boundaries is a primary determination of its fiscal health. Cities with greater abilities to annex have much higher bond rating scores. Annexation is far from an outmoded or dying practice. During the 1990s and 2000s, 90% of the cities that could annex additional land did so. And the flexibility to annex surrounding land and communities was more important to the city's bond rating, a sign of fiscal health, than the area's poverty rate or median household income. Annexing land, therefore, appears to be an important route to economic health and development. We've been presented with a tremendous opportunity. I would like to remind my fellow aldermen that we represent the roughly 6,000 city residents in each of our districts. We do not represent the town of Wilson. The town of Wilson has had the opportunity to deal with this issue, and they have chosen to delay and obstruct. Now they want to interject themselves into our process by lobbying us into making a decision that is to the detriment of the city. And I'm tired of other governmental bodies telling us what we should do. After 118 years, we have the county's largest employer requesting to become part of the city. The future opportunities for growth become realistic if we embrace this and pass this annexation. We have two paths to choose from. We can remain stagnant and wither into insignificance by bending to the pressure from those outside the city, or we can be strong and thrive by voting in favor of this annexation and the exciting future it provides. I choose the latter. By the way, I have asked Clerk Richards and Attorney Adams if they have ever been aware of the city declining an annexation request, and they both resoundingly said no. They did not know of any instance where that took place. I would like to once again thank Mr. Kohler and Mr. Cassidy for this opportunity, and it is my hope that I can be the first to welcome you back into the city. Thank you. Next is Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. We've, we've listened to quite a few comments and, and concerns and speeches, and um, obviously a lot of them have been very well thought out and very eloquent. Um, and in saying that, I, I want to say that, you know, many say that the road less traveled is a phrase for a topic which people do not want to address. I'm sure we've all heard of that. Having, that, having had that topics in the past few years, uh, that has been such one of the such themes. This would be one of them. I would like to say thanks to the, to, for your patience and the many uh, city staff, including the council, and I have... I have had many frustrating conversations and statements and have been said and stated in such a way. We've all had many, many conversations um, for and against. Many have thanked us for the, th for the thankless job that we do and acknowledge the difficulty in the positions that we all have and how difficult it is being in these positions. Growth and change is hard and we all know that. If, if, if it was easy, we wouldn't be talking like this right now. I would like to also say thanks to Mary Lynn Donahue for assisting in negotiating the pre-annexation agreement and to the level that it is, even though she may not agree with it at this point. We know that this, this can be difficult with subjects of level and complexity. We can always continue to say, you know, hindsight's 2020. Thanks to the SCEDC for they have assisted in the growth and opportunities for Sheboygan County they truly are an extension for the growth in our city and county. I'm personally, I am personally a growth advocate for the city of Sheboygan, and I have seen the beginning of the great changes in the past four years. We've talked about that. Uh, Daryl Hoffland actually had pointed it, out, pointed it out also. We have so much improvements, and you can be working on things, and it takes years for it to actually be implemented. Next, I would like to thank the Friends of the Black River Forest. Yes, I would like to thank the Friends of the Black River Forest. And many of the passionate debates that we have had occurring over the period of time. Although we can debate passionately, sometimes it is difficult to have clarity and 
for either, from either side and see the forest from the trees. I would also like to thank the Kohler family and this opportunity it is great. It is something that we're going to talk about for decades. In closing, the situation should show all of us in the path of growth, no matter if it is in the manufacturing or service industry. It is also person, personally care that together we can all help each other through the guidance and regulatory agencies in which we have to abide to. We have to have faith in the system. Today's decisions will again strengthen the growth either way in, in what we can be in the future for years to come, to live, work, and play in a stronger future. Thank you. Next is Alderperson Trester. I just have one small comment, and that is we keep talking about growth of the city, but I think we are 16 people, and each of us represent people out there that are not in this room. And have we asked those people out there if they want the growth that we project in this room? And the ones that have talked to me said they live in Sheboygan because they like Sheboygan the way it is. They moved back to Sheboygan because they like the small town flavor. They like Sheboygan without industry as much as what we're talking about. They don't want their forest, they don't <coughs> want the state park to be disrupted. And I think each one of us has a responsibility. We don't work for the mayor, we don't work for Mr. Kohler, we don't work for the city attorney or the administrator. We work for those people who voted us into this position. And we need to listen to them. We don't need to listen to the money. We need to listen to our constituents. We need to listen to people. Because you know what? In 2035, some of us aren't even gonna be alive to know what the city of Sheboygan is gonna look like. But we will know our neighbor next door and the people across the street now. And we know what they want, at least I know what some of them want because I've listened. And there's nothing worse than a government who thinks they know what the people want without the people's voice. That's all I've got to say. Alderperson Nelson. Good. Okay, there's no more lights. I ask the clerk to call the roll. Eleven ayes, five noes. This vote needed a supermajority of 11 votes. It's received that, so the motion passes. Next, we'll move on to item 2.10, which is R number 43 of 1718 by the City Planning Commission, to whom was referred General Ordinance number 4 of 1718 by Alderperson Boren and Sorensen, and R number 35 of 1718 by the City Clerk for an application from the Kohler Company for an, the establishment of a zoning classification of property uh, being the entire area included in the annexation petition dated May 15th of 2017 as class suburban residential SR5 classification and recommends passing the ordinance. Alderperson Bellinger. I move to accept and file and pass the ordinance. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the zoning classification? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll for passage? Hold on just a second. Alderperson Lewandowski, you had a comment? Yes, I just want to say that a lot of people in the town of Wilson have told us that they don't want this change in the classification, and they are now our constituents, and we should listen to them. And I will be voting against this. Thank you for those comments. The Any voting, other? The voting is, it's open if you see it on your screen. Okay. 
Okay, we're calling the roll. Scott? No. <coughs> Love and eyes, five no's. Motion passes. Next, we'll move on to the consent agenda. That'll include items 3.2 through 3.17. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Making a mo make a motion to accept and file um, all our O's, accept and adopt all our C's, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items in the consent agenda? Seeing none, would you clerk please call the roll for passage? Yes. Alderperson Donahue. I would just note in the consent agenda that the water commissioner's report was not there. The acuity, um, the acuity annexation was listed twice. At least on my computer under the, under the water commissioner's report it was the attachment, you mean? The attachment, yeah. Oh, yeah, we can change that. Okay, thanks. We'll make that correction. Thank you. <clears throat> 16 eyes on the consent agenda. Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll move on to reports of officers. Item 4.1 is RO number 109 of 1718 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting request for approval to provide site access agreements to various property owners for the planning and design services needed for the extension of the Sheboygan Business Center with similar terms and agreements. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and, and then pass. Second. Is there any objection to suspension? Why are we suspending? Chad, can you uh, provide that reason? The reason we're suspending is because in document 3.7, you approved a contract to hire Rukerd Milky to start preliminary engineering and planning services. And in order to accomplish a wetland delineation before everything dies off in October, they need to start immediately. So we need to get these agreements out to adjacent property owners to start that process. Thank you for that information. Alderperson Bellinger. Uh, Mayor, in, in future, Mayor, could, could we have a reason for suspension as part of our, our packet and our documents so we know, you know, we, what, what, you know in the future, so we, I don't have to keep asking this every time that we're suspending why, why we're doing it? Thank you for that suggestion. We'll take it under advisement. Is there any other discussion? Okay, then. Um, is there, we'll, we're ready to vote on the motion then. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? <coughs> All right. Sixteen eyes. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 4.2 is RO number 112 of 1718 by the Director of Planning and Development submitting a request to adopt the 2017 analysis of impediments to fair housing plan as prepared by the Department of City Development. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to suspend and pass. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Chad, could you explain Alderman this Alderman Bellinger, I put it in this one. It's the last sentence in this one. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, the, the, what this is, is it's a fair housing plan that we're supposed to have for any kind of federal CDBG dollars. Um, we're starting a major process in 2019, uh, for approval in 2019 of a assessment of the entire city. Um, there's a memorandum of understanding going to the Finance and Personnel Committee to do that. But in the short term, HUD has advised us to update our current plan, which expired expires in 2017. It was drafted in 2012. So we have something current on the books. 
and then in anticipation that we're doing a more detailed process. So the reason for the suspension is this has to go in to get the black grant dollars and it's due on August 16th and they just advised us of this a week or two ago, so. Thank you. Yep. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? All right. 16 eyes. Motion passes. Items 4.3 through 4.10 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, 5.1 is resolution number 50 of 1718 by Alderperson Holshu authorizing the city attorney to engage the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the law and licensing committee and the common council with regard to a park impact fee appeal hearing requested by Robert J. Werner, president of Lee Realty Incorporated, doing business as Werner Homes and president of member Stonebrook Crossings LLC and authorizing payment for said services. Is Alderperson Holshu. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the community, wait, I got the wrong one. I've uh, asked for suspension first. Um, I would like to ask for suspension because we have to address this in our law and licensing meeting next week. Is there any objection to suspension? Please proceed. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Under discussion? <coughs> Anything else? I would refer to um, our city attorney. Chuck, could you please uh, explain this one? This is uh, an appeal uh, of a park impact fee. Uh, we have to hire special outside counsel to represent the <coughs> uh, committee. Uh, because uh, I am conflicted out because I have provided legal advice to uh, Chad Palachek and his department with regard to how, of how, to, um, how to proceed. So because of that, I'm conflicted out from actually representing the committee. Uh, and so as we often do at the Law and Licensing Committee, we will hire outside counsel uh, for that hearing. Thank you for that information. Alderperson Bellinger. Just a question, Attorney Adams, does that preclude Rose then from working on it as well? Yes. Okay, thank you. In the, in the future, it's, this was the first one. In the future, it's our hope that there won't be the need for legal counsel to actually represent the department and we won't need to do this. But for this one, we, ha we had to. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion on this motion? Okay, now will the clerk please call the roll. Nice. Motion passes. Items 5.2 through 5.5 will be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, uh, item 6.1 is RC number 80 of 1718 by the Public Works Committee to whom is referred RO number 99 of 1718 by the Director of Public Works submitting the co-digestion evaluation for the City of Sheboygan Wastewater Treatment Plant and recommends to accept and adopt the report of findings and to suspend the co-digestion program. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to accept and adopt. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll. Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.2 is RC number 82 of 1718 by Law and Licensing Committee to whom is referred pursuant to RO number 84 of 1718 by the City Clerk submitting license application and recommends that beverage operators license number 0140 be denied based upon his ineligibility for a license and failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. 
Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. I'd like to see if Richard Davis is here. Richard, do we need to check the second room or is that room has been empty? It's empty. Um, Richard is not here this evening, nor was he at our meetings. So our committee voted to deny his um, license based on his in, in thank you for the license and failure to cooperate with our committee is there any other discussion on the motion seeing none will the clerk please call the roll all right <clears throat> 16 eyes motion passes Item 6.3 is RC number 83 of 1718 by the Lawn Licensing Committee. Tomb is referred pursuant to RO number 84 of 1718 by the City Clerk, submitting various license applications and recommends denying beverage operators license number 5705 based upon his ineligibility for a license and his failure to cooperate with the committee. Alder Person Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Is there a Mr. Eric Meyer here? It does not appear that Eric is here, nor did he come to our meetings. He is ineligible for a license and he failed to come to our committee to have a hearing. Thank you for that information. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Item 6.4 is RC number 87 of 1718 by the Finance and Personnel Committee. Tumas referred resolution number 48 of 1718 by Alder Person Born authorizing and establishing an appropriation in the 2017 budget for TIF 16 development incentive and recommends that the resolution be passed. Alder Person Donahue. Thank you, Mayor. I move to accept, adopt, and pass the resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Under matters laid over, item 7.1 is resolution number 42 of 1718 by Alderperson Wolf authorizing accepting a grant from Sheboygan County in the amount of $6,925 to be used towards the ADA kayak canoe launch facility in Kiwanis Park. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to uh, pass resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the resolution? Seeing none, will the clerk call the roll? Aye. <coughs> 16 eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.2 is general ordinance number 10 of 1718 by all the person Holshue, Donahue, Lewandowski, and Reinflesch permitting horses in the downtown area and providing for prompt cleanup of manure. Alderperson Holshue. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you for that motion and support under discussion. Um, they, first time for me, we sat down and chatted. This is for horse-drawn carriages and the rides that they give. And the, the question we had is um, basically how, how much time do you get to clean up the, the horse poop, basically? And they have an hour, is that correct? I believe that's Or correct. they have to wear a diaper. So we will now be having horse rides um, throughout our city, which will be very romantic. Thank you for those <laughs> comments. Alder person Lewandowski. I had asked this at the committee and I thought some of the other Members here might like to have the same question answered, but what is considered a downtown area? 
Chad, would you like to answer that? I'll answer it. Um, it so the reason it, what is considered the downtown area is the area that used to be known as Plaza 8. So we had an outdated ordinance that banned horses in Plaza 8. Uh, we did have, at one point, a, a circuit court judge who interpreted, and we're talking 15 years ago, interpreted one of our other old ordinances that referred to Plaza 8 after Plaza 8 was gone to still be effective to cover the areas that used to be covered by Plaza 8. And so uh, this, in essence, eliminates that so that they can be anywhere uh, in the city rather than um, everywhere except what used to be Plaza 8. Thank you for that explanation. Does that answer your question? Okay. Alderperson Nelson. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Just, uh, just a question. I'm assuming that it's the operator that is going to be uh, cleaning up the manure within an hour. And also, uh, is there any penalty for not cleaning it up? Yes. So what this does is it basically makes it the responsibility uh, of the operator to, to clean up uh, the manure. Um, if, uh, if they do not, uh, if, they, if they continue to violate the ordinance, not only uh, could they be cited uh, with, uh, with a citation for the ordinance uh, under 66.8, uh, but we've also uh, provide, included a provision that uh, uh, we could, in essence, order that f they would have to use the horse diapering system um, and they would not be permitted to operate without doing that. Thank you. Chad, did you still want to make a comment? This really stemmed from a thought that I had about bringing down horses to the downtown on concert series. So we went out and talked to the Wade House because they run a horse and buggy um, type of operation and they have an interest in coming here. However, the ordinances were out of date and it really stemmed on getting the ordinances up to date. But I think if you should pass this ordinance, um, our goal with the Business Improvement District is to continue next year working with the Wade House and maybe providing a horse and buggy um, system in the downtown on certain days just to kind of transport people around as another venue for transportation. So I'd encourage you to pass it. I think, you know, it's, it's a clever way of moving people and um, the, the, the Wade House was interested in, a, in doing a diapering system if they had to. Um, it's not the preferred method, but they, you know, would work through that. But I think um, it's really about just allowing horse, bu horse and buggy to be here, whether it's a wedding party or just a public transportation venue. Thank you. Alderperson Sorensen. I guess I just have a quick few questions. Um, since I'm so young, I guess I don't really know where Plaza 8 is, but I'm just kind of <laughs> assuming that that's, All right. that's, that's the downtown 8th Street area. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, Plaza 8's before my time, too. So. Okay. I'll, I'll address with Plaza 8. So in 1976, the city uh, approved a uh, pedestrian mall where they shut down A Street from Center Avenue to Erie, and it was going to become a pedestrian mall like, like Denver State has, Street. and they were going to enclose all of the stores and had this big grand old plan, and that's when the Helper and Fountain kind of came along at the library and those types of things. So Plaza 8 was A Street when it was closed down to become a pedestrian square. Um, I guess for some of my questions, I just got some quick quick questions, if I can just shoot them off to anyone. Um, so are, are, are the horses going to be able to walk around anywhere? Are we going to have designated paths or, or designated roads that they can and cannot go on? Um, and also, would we be installing signs, you know, like horse Xing or caution horse poop or something along those lines? Because my worry is that if a horse, you know, leaves a pile on the street that, you know, someone might, you know, cars might be driving through if they have a whole hour, you know, to finish their route and then that's going to get all over the place and make a mess of downtown. City attorney. Yeah. So uh, first of all, we're, while we're eliminating the ordinance regarding horses in Plaza 8, yeah. the exposure of unwholesome matter applies to the whole city. So uh, uh, previously, horses were allowed elsewhere in the city. Uh, but in essence, there was no provision. If I mean, frankly, uh, the way the law was written, um, you could have cited somebody using a horse elsewhere in the city it, the, the second they dropped some manure. Well, that does, didn't make a whole lot of sense either. 
um, they'll be able to they'll be able to have a horse anywhere in the city. Um, the the other issue is um, not it's not really dealt with with this ordinance, but whether or not an organization like that is going to require a taxi cab ordinance. Um, and we have we specifically designed this for uh, organizations like what Chad is talking about, um, who are operating on a fixed route, not going from wherever, you know, not just picking up passengers who'd say, hey, I'd like to take a like horse a, out a to horse wherever. Um, so that would not require a taxi cab license. Um, similarly, someone who has just sort of uh, ordered, you know, you know, for a wedding, let's say they want to get transported from the church to uh, a reception site or something like that. Uh, that's always been allowed uh, in the city um, as long as they avoided the area that was covered by Plaza 8. Um, and none of that will change. Thank you for that explanation. Um, older person Boren. I'm one of the older guys on this council uh, in years, and I was just going to ask Alderman Nelson whether he recalls how this was handled, this manure issue was handled back in the 20s and 30s. Please sit down, Alderman Boren. <laughs> Thank you for that question. <laughs> You want to respond, Alderman Nelson? No. Okay, great. Wow. Seeing no more valid discussion, I'd like wow. to ask the clerk to call the roll. No more Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Next is a contemplated closed session. All the person will. No. We've got. No, eight, I'm sorry. Other matters. City one. attorney. Uh, eight point one is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December thirty first, twenty seventeen, June thirtieth, twenty eighteen, and June thirtieth, twenty nineteen. That'll be referred to the law and licensing committee. Eight point two is a resolution by all the person Trester. Uh, changing the name of the North Flats Neighborhood Association to the Maple Heights Neighborhood Association. That'll lie over. Uh, 8.3 is an RO by the Board of Contractors Examiner uh, submitting application for building contractor licenses that have been granted. That'll also lie over. Now, Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. Even though I really would like to jump to 10.1. <laughs> I will make a motion to convene in closed session under, under the exemption provided in section 18.85 sub 1 sub E of the Wisconsin states where competitive and bargaining reasons require the closed session related to the land of the town of Wilson adjacent to I-43. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Will the clerk please call the roll. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. <clears throat> Sixteen eyes. Motion passes. Uh, we'll be going into closed session then for our viewers at home. We'll be adjourning in closed session, so this will end our broadcast for this evening. And we'll take a two-minute break uh, while we clear the chambers.